Hello, I'm Pastor Hank. I'm so happy to be able to share a few minutes with you. You know, the Bible says that there's a rest in God that all of us who believe in Jesus Christ can enter into. You know, this is the time of year that we celebrate the birthday, the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Uh, you know, it's not about what you get or what you don't get. It's, it's not about how much you have or don't have. It's, it's all about a God that loved you so much that he sent his son to get you back. Hey, listen, I'm going to share part of a message here with you now that where I'm talking about that rest, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4, I'm going to read you verses 9 and 10 out of the uh, Amplified. Uh, it says, uh, So then... There is still awaiting a full and complete Sabbath rest reserved for the true people of God. For he who has once entered God's rest also ceases from the weariness and pain of human labor, just as God rested from those labors, peculiarly his own. Let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves <coughs> and, and strive diligently to enter in to that rest, that rest of God, to know and to experience it for ourselves, that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fell. Well, how's everybody doing today? Everybody okay? Huh? Praise the Lord. We we began last week, and we were talking about the Sabbath. Uh, uh, I had had a question that asked me, and uh, so I, I just began to study a little bit, and, and I, I don't know, I just uh, saw some interesting things about the rest. And, uh, you know, we, in the Old Testament, there was a Sabbath day. Uh, in fact, God commanded that, uh, God says that God rested from his work on the seventh day. And so in the Old Testament, they were commanded to have a day a week, which was the Sabbath day, which was actually Saturday. And they were commanded to have that day where they didn't do any labor, but they just, they just rested, and they rested in the Lord. And they, they spent time with God, supposedly. Well, in the New Testament, we no longer have a day that's set apart, but the New Testament, our whole life is to be that day and that peace. Uh, in fact, Paul, in the third and fourth chapter here of Hebrews, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, uh, but in the third and fourth chapter here, he, uh, he, he develops the concept that Jesus is our Sabbath rest. Uh, we know that Jesus said in Matthew, he said that he was the Lord of the Sabbath, or in other words, he was telling us he is the Sabbath. And uh, then he said in Mark, he said, uh, man wasn't made for the Sabbath, but Sabbath was made for man. Uh, so in the third and fourth chapter, Paul begins to develop this idea of, of Jesus and being our Sabbath rest and uh, what he's trying to reveal is is that a relationship with Jesus as we develop this relationship with him it frees us from the law it frees us from the bondage it frees us uh, and, and allows us to rest in the finished work that Jesus did for us uh, you know Jesus dealt with a problem that uh, the, the 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 Sabbath and the rest and all the law and everything had become such a it, it had lost its purpose. The Sabbath rest actually was a day when they rested and trusted God and believed God, but it had become a day where they just were trying to obey ordinances and trying to do things. If you'll notice through the Scripture, Jesus was always getting in trouble with the religious folk about doing something on the Sabbath or about their his disciples eating corn on the Sabbath or 
you know, doing things. And, and, and what had happened was is what Jesus was trying to tell them was, he said, you know, you guys have made this thing all religion. You've made it all, all uh, uh, dues and all ordinances and all regulations, and you've forgotten the purpose. And, and you know, how many know if we're not careful, we can do the same thing. We can get into all the things that we, we know we're to do for God, and, and it isn't the fact that we shouldn't be doing them, but we forget the reason why. Jesus one time talked to the religious leaders there, and he said, you know, you guys, you guys tithe to the very mint leaf. I mean, you tithe down to the, to the last penny, but you, but you neglect the weightier things, which is having a heart for God. And he goes on and he said, you know, you ought to do these things. I get tickled when people say, well, we shouldn't tithe in the, in, the old, in the New Testament. We don't have to tithe. Well, Jesus said you ought to. Huh? He said you ought to, but he said you ought not to forget the other thing. And so sometimes, I may mean, know, we just get, we just get uh, so bound up in our do's and don'ts and and. And, and the, our appearance and our performance that, that we forget why, why we do all that. And, and you know, I, I just, uh, I want to be a good person. I want to do good things. I want to, uh, I want to have good performance. But, but I want to do that out of a gratitude and out of a love to a father that loves me. Huh? I mean, I want to do that out of, man, I, 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 I'm excited about living for God. I want to live for God. But not because I have to. It's just that I want to. Now, nah, he's so good. Now, nah, he's so good. Everybody, you just all right now, you just, just say, God, you're so good. Nah, I mean, you came in here thinking about your problems and thinking about all your, all your stuff. So you just say, God, you're so good. I like what Greg said, you know, if you're not happy, it's because you've neglected and you've pushed away the good things that have happened to you. And if you are happy, then you've, you've neglected and kind of pushed away those bad things that happened. You know, there's always going to be some bad things happen to us. But, you know, I choose to think on those good things. I choose to think on the things that are lovely. I choose to think on the things that are, that are, that are true and, and of good report. I just, I just choose to think on the goodness of God. Uh, I mean, we can all play our fiddle if we want to. Anybody hadn't got anything to be sad about? Huh? I don't see a hand. But I'm not paying attention to that stuff anymore. And let me just say, I, this Christmas season, I, I, I hope you have a good Christmas. And, and, and don't let your Christmas, don't, don't let your happiness be geared by what you have or what you don't have. Man, it isn't about gifts. It isn't about money. It isn't about all that stuff. God wants to give all that stuff to us, but it's about loving the one who gave the greatest gift for us. Huh? And so, so, you know, you can be discouraged, and I know, hey, Christmas time is, sometimes it's a discouraging time. Some people, more people are sad at Christmas time than any other time of the year. Uh, I don't want you to be. If you're watching this on TV, I don't want you to be. Because, see, we got so much to be glad about. we got so much. We can enter into a rest with Him, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference what the world's throwing at me. I can enter into a place with Him that, man, it's okay. Huh? It's okay. And I can have His joy in here regardless of what's going on out here. Well, and, and, and that's resting in what God done. That's resting in the finished works of Jesus. Resting in what's been done for us. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Paul's revealing here that, that, that how this relationship with Jesus frees us from this, from this uh, law that was to bring righteousness. You know, when you get to studying the law, the first five books of the Bible, basically. And, 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 and there's, I think there's like 613 laws. And, 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 and you get to studying all these things. And, 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 and I want you to understand the law 
showed us how hard and complicated it is to be right with God. But if you could keep all these 600 and some laws, if you could keep all those things, you could be right with God. Well, the truth was nobody could do it. And so, so Jesus came and he did it for us. Nobody could do it in the old time. Nobody could do it and nobody can do it now. And, 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 and God knew that people wouldn't be able to do it and that's why he instituted a sacrifice. Every year they brought a sacrifice to the priest. And man, it had to be done just, just exactly right. And, and just I mean, if the priest didn't do it right and went into the Holy of Holies and hadn't done something right, he dropped dead. Whew. And so what I began to see is this law shows me how complicated, how hard, how difficult it is to be right with God. But Jesus came, and when he said in John, in John, uh, 30, uh, John 19, 30, when he said, the Bible says they gave him that, that sour wine or that, that, pale me- that pain medicine that was to dull his pain. He, he said when, they, he, when, he, when he partook of that, he said, it's finished, and he gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. He said, it's finished, and he left this place. See, when he said it was finished, all that hard part that's impossible, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. And when Jesus Jesus said it was finished, he had fulfilled, he had completed, he had done everything that was so complicated in the law. He had done it. He said, remember once he said, I didn't come to destroy the law, I came to fulfill it. See, the law is not in operation. Not, it's not ceased now. The law still is in operation. It's still good. But what Jesus did is he came and he fulfilled it. He, he carried it out. He completed it. He did everything that it took to be right with God. And then he turned around and said, Here, Hank, it's a free gift. Take it. Does that make sense? Here, it's a free gift. Take it. Did you know when you spend time under condemnation, you're pushing that gift away? When you spend time thinking how unworthy you are, you're pushing that gift away. When you think out, spend time thinking about how unpleased God is with you, you're pushing that gift away. And we do that subconsciously, not even realizing it. And what I'm learning to do is when all that guilt and all that shame and all that stuff comes to me, I'm learning to say, yeah, you're right, but let me tell you something. Jesus took all my guilt and all my shame when he went to that cross. See, that's something you have to mentally do. You have to enter into that rest yourself. Nobody can do it for you. You have to mentally say, yeah, okay, maybe I'm not worthy, but I'm getting in Jesus and He is worthy. So I'm trading all my bad for all His good. I'm trading all my condemnation for all His freedom. I don't have to operate under Hank anymore. I'm going to operate in Jesus. And every time that I'm going like this, I'm pushing that gift away. And we're constantly, how many know we're constantly bombarded with things? How many, how many don't need me to stand up here and tell you how bad you are? Uh, you already know because you looked in the mirror this morning. You with me? But what I want you to do when you start looking in the mirror, instead of thinking how bad you are, I want you to start looking in the mirror and go, Whoo, you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. Man, the God that created this universe loves you. You're important to Him. You've got a mission here. He's got something for you that nobody else could do as good as you can do. Man, you are something. Now, don't get conceited and big-headed, but man, have some pride. Not self-pride, but have some pride in Jesus and what he did. Does that make sense? And that's what he did, and that's this rest we can enter into. And it's, and it's, it's free. Let me just read you out of Ephesians chapter 2. I'll just read you those verses. Verses 8 and 9 says, 
For it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, that you're delivered from judgment, <laughs> and you're made partakers of Christ's salvation <whistles> through your faith. You hear that? It's by free grace. It's, and, and you can partake of that freedom through faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves. It's not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it's a gift of God. Not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest we'd be able to boast ourselves. It's not the result of what anyone can possibly do so no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself you see when i'm able to push that guilt and that shame when i'm able to partake of that salvation that he's offered me you know when i'm able to take of that I, i'm able to push what the devil's doing out of my life i'm able to i'm able i'm able to push that guilt away i'm able to push that condemnation away does this make any sense Well, see, I can enter in to that rest of the finished work. Because, see, I can rest in that finished work. See, regardless of anything that happens around me, regardless of anything happens to me, I know that my eternal security, my eternal life is secure with Him because of what Jesus did. Are you hearing that? Hmm? See, I, I can rest in that. I can rest in the fact here, here a while back, and I don't know. I, I, I know you, many of you, do the same thing. Catch yourself doing it. But, but you know, I was what church background I had growing up. It, I was taught that that I was nothing and that I never could please God. And I mean, in our church, we were even afraid to take communion if we were taking it unworthy. And we all knew we were unworthy. And, and man, it was just this constant struggle and constant battle inside. And so we carry that with us as we get older. Even when we learn the truth, that tendency is still in there to think, oh gosh, I hope I make it to heaven. You ever ask anybody, a Christian, are you, are, are you saved? Are you going to heaven? And they say, I hope so. I didn't ask you if you ever said it. But I have. And I remember one day, and I mean, I, I just it's been a year or two back, and I just out of the clear blue, I just started thinking about heaven and hell, and I started thinking about Mount how 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 scary it would be if you had to go to hell and I start thinking about all this stuff and then 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 you start thinking well man am I right am I doing everything right am I am I am I living this right am, I don't want to deceive anybody I don't want to lead anybody astray and you're fighting this mental battle inside of me you you know and and, and that's what I was doing and I was just doing all that and I was going oh oh I don't know I don't know and and and, and then all of a sudden just something happened inside of me I said but you know what I can't go to heaven anyway if it isn't for you, if it isn't for you, Jesus. So I might as well quit worrying about that. I mean, if it, it I'm, de I'm totally dependent on you. If I can't go, it's it's because of you. I mean, you, the only reason I can go is because you made it possible, not because of anything I could do, or not because of anything I didn't do, or not if I did it right or if I did it wrong. I get to go because he did it right. Huh? I'm secure. Now that doesn't mean I I got I can just go do anything I want. That doesn't mean I can just live like the devil. That isn't what he's saying. But because I know I'm secure, somebody said, "Well, do you think you could? Do you think you could fall away?" I said, "I don't know. I'm not going to try." I mean, what kind of idiot's going to try to fall away? Huh? The enemy was bombarding me with that one day. And I just finally, I just stopped and I said, Lord, all I know is if I have to go to hell, there's going to be somebody in hell that loves you with all their heart and I'm going to be shouting Jesus. 
that kind of stuff will pull you right out of that nonsense because the devil knows he doesn't have you anymore. See, you've got to enter into that rest. You've got to do it on purpose. Now, 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 I know that about my salvation going to heaven. But what I've learned, folks, is if I'm going to live the abundant life that God's made for me, that He desires me to live, I'm going to have to do it the same way. Hmm? If I'm going to be blessed, I'm going to have to do it the same way. I'm going to have to use my faith to reach in and grab what His grace has provided for me. It's the only way it's going to happen. If, 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 if uh, hardship and pain and people's needs would cause God to move, we'd be having so many miracles right now that you couldn't even keep track. But that's not what causes God to move. What causes Him, He responds to our faith in what He did. And by faith, we reach out and we grab by that grace that, that, that's with us and that's that, what it's provided for us. Huh? You see, I don't have to go to hell because there was a time by faith I reached out and grabbed that part of grace. If I want to be healed and walk in health, I have to do it the same way. I have to reach out with my faith and I have to grab that part of grace. Does this make sense? If I don't, if, if, if I don't want to have less than enough, if I want to have more than enough, if I want to prosper, I have to reach out with my faith and grab that part of grace for my own life. Hmm? God told me to do something last week. How many were here last week? You know, and I spoke and I, 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 I spoke money to come to you, extra money to come to you. Do you know you can't believe how many reports I've had this week of people that got blessed, that got extra money that wasn't coming, who didn't think it was, didn't know it was coming, and things like that. Matter of fact, somebody gave me some money, and I counted it, and I praised God, and I just put it that night, I just put it down. The next day when I counted it, there was $100 more in it than there was the night before. You say, well, you must have miscounted. Well, maybe. Maybe God just wanted to do something. But you know what I noticed was? When I prayed that, I could see, and, and, and you didn't go like this, but I could see some of you went, y y your, your spirit was reaching out, yes, I received that. Yes, I received that. Yes, I received that. But some were going, well, well. You know what, you know the feeling I'm talking about. See, but that faith is a spirit. It's a spirit that reaches it. It's a spirit of faith, just like a spirit of fear. See, some of you are afraid you won't make it. You're, you're afraid it won't work out. You're afraid things are going to happen. You're afraid. That, that, that's more than just in your mind. That's not, that's not fear thoughts. It gets in your spirit, and it's a spirit of fear. Is this making any sense? But faith is a spirit. It gets in our spirit, and we have a spirit of faith. Man, it's called rest. I just rest because, man, I know my God's bigger than my situation. I know God's bigger than my need. I know God's bigger than anything the enemy can throw at me. I know my God will cause no weapon that's formed against me. He won't let any weapon that's formed against me to prosper. Why? Well, because I saw it in this book and, and I took it and I believed it. See, now, it's okay to be right where you are. Maybe you were one that went, well, I, I don't think we ought to talk about money in church. Why? You talk about it everywhere else. Huh? Well, I just don't think. Yeah, but you know, the truth is, you talk about it more when you don't have it than you do when you do have it. Huh? Bible doesn't say money's evil. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. 
We'll talk some more about that later. That isn't what today's about. But, you know, some of us loved money more when we didn't have any than we did when we got some. Huh? That just meant I spent more time thinking about it. How am I going to get it? What's it going to What's it going to take? How am I going to... You, you with me? Don't we have a God that just like to heap blessings and heap abundant life on us? Doesn't that make sense? Well, it's by grace that I have to live. It's, it's by faith that I reach out. Uh, I live my life in Christ by the grace of God through my faith in Him. Does that make sense? See, uh, God's grace, listen to this, God's grace, yes, it's unmerited favor, yes, it's what I don't deserve, and yes, but, but God's grace actually is, it, part of it is His power working in me that enables me to do whatever I need to do. It's His power working in me that enables me to do. This rest doesn't mean I rest from work, from labor. It means I rest in labor. Huh? He said, he said, go into all the world. He said, as you do to others, it'll be done to you. You understand it's not a, it's not a, a rest that just stops us from doing anything. It's a rest that enables us to do everything. Huh? I can what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, we know that up here. It just hadn't taken root in here yet. Right? I said we. I'm not up here talking to you like somebody that's, uh, that's, a, that's arrived. But I'll tell you this, I'm on my way. I mean, now you're not going to stop me and nobody else is going to stop me and the devil's not going to stop me. I'm on my way. Huh? God's rest. God's rest. Now listen, now, now, now the whole thing here. Uh, what, what, what's all this, what's Paul talking about here? What's Hebrews talking about here? God's rest. You know, what is it that made God so angry? That he, that, he, that he wouldn't let his kids go into the promised land? What is it that made him so angry that he wouldn't let them enter that rest? You see, Canaan land was their promised land. Canaan land was their place of abundance. Canaan land was their place of security in God. Canaan land was the land, the place that God had prepared for them, for them to enter into. A place of, the Bible called it a land of milk and honey. A place of abundance. And Canaan land is to be a shadow, a type of our life in Jesus. I hope you enjoyed that. You know, I was only able to share about half the message with you. Uh, I'd love to send it to you if you're interested. Give us a call. I'll be happy to send you a CD of the whole service. Or you can go online to our website, cccjoplin.com, and download it. Hey, listen, I just believe it would be a blessing to you. You know, I don't ever like to leave the broadcast without giving you an opportunity, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord, to make him your personal Lord and Savior. If you're not for sure right now, I want to say a little prayer with you. And if you'll just say it out loud and mean it, something will happen inside of you. So right where you are, bow your head and say this with me. Father, I want to be saved. Jesus, I want to make you the Lord of my life. Right now, I give you my life. I want to live it for you, but I need your help. So I thank you right now for saving me. And I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, uh, or even if you didn't and you'd like to, give us a call. But I'd like to send you, if you did, I'd like to send you some information to help you get on your way with the Lord. Hey, listen, as we leave, I just want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And uh, I just want you to know that I love you. And more important than anything else, I want you to know that God loves you.